Okay, so the other function in the machine that I'd like to look at you with really briefly is the sampling function of it. To enter into the sampling mode, just literally hit the sampling button there, and you can see that already the display of what we can see has changed, okay? So you could record externally into the machine if you wanted to. That sound source could come from a record player, a CD, whatever you've plugged into your sound card effectively. It could even be yourself with a microphone or a guitar, Obviously, it's down to you to decide however you want to apply and what you want to record into it, okay? So, for me, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to take something off of the hard drive that I've got on the computer. The easiest way for me to do that is to actually just hit the disk button here. When I enter into the disk mode, what I'm actually now presented with, I'm presented with my hard drive within my computer. I've got some stuff here, so I'm just going to take this drum loop and I'm going to drag it onto group A, okay? Already you can see now that there's actually a sample within there. So if I hit the button, okay, that's the sample that we've got in. Okay, so now, if I'd wanted to record something externally, I would have to make sure that I was on source external here. I need to tell it where the input is coming from, i.e. which channel to listen to from my sound card, and then you have different modes that you can use to record in. Detect basically means I set a threshold. Anyone that comes from an old sampling background will understand that. Those that are more new to it, basically all it means by threshold is when the sample go, um, goes over a certain volume, then the machine will start to record. So if you're recording from, say, an old vinyl, it may be that on the silent sections there's quite a lot of crackles and pops because obviously that's what happens with vinyl. You may not want to record those and you may only want the machine to start recording or detect when to start recording when it goes over a certain threshold. So that's a really useful feature. The other one is sync. By sync, what it basically means is I can predetermine the length that I want the machine to record for. So let's say I only want it to record two bars. This works very well with digital music because obviously it's been quantized. So let's say I only want to record two bars, then all I would do is set it to two bars. Machine would work out when it came to the end of two bars and only captured that. It varies a little bit with more human orientated music because obviously humans don't keep perfect timing with a metronome. But again, experiment, find out what works for you. Let's say now though, I've actually got the sample in and I'm happy where it is, okay? I can go into the edit mode and I can actually look to start uh, to trim the start point of it and you'll see that when I move that, it actually moves, okay? where that sound's starting, okay? And the end point in the same way as well. We want all of it, okay? So we're gonna keep all of it. You've got a loop function within the second page of that. Again, remember, when we have a little number with a slash and then another number, that means that we're on page, on this instance, page two of three, okay? Again, get used to navigating around right, that and, play, and playing with it as well. Slice function is something that's really useful on the machiner, and by slice, what it means is it will slice the sample up into a predetermined amount, okay? So this is a really quick way to get a drum loop in and to actually try and isolate the individual hits of it. And you can see that when I've got it on 16 slice, it's sliced my sample into 16 different pieces, okay? I can vary the lengths of that as well. The least I can have it is four, Okay, the most that I can have is 32. So actually it's a really good way for you to take a drum loop, slice it and then replay that drum loop if that's what you want to do, okay? Again, you've got different modes by which it can run in the slice bit. We were in split there, which is exactly what it says, it just splits it. You can also go on to grid. Grid is working more in a key signature, sorry, a timing signature then. So now we're looking at fourths, eighths and sixteenths up to, up to 32, okay? How you access the next 32? Okay, so obviously you're thinking, well, I'm only playing slice 16 there. Again, use this cursor button here, now you're playing slice 32 as well, okay? So remember, slice number one up to slice number 16, hit the cursor and then you're running off slice number 17 up to 32, okay? So let's go, and then the last one that we've got is detect. Detect, in, in essence, is basically, it will look at the transients or the peaks of the sample, and the more we turn the sensitivity up, 
the more slices we get. This is a really good way for you not to, well, for, to come up with some interesting slices that you might not have done if you just stuck with the more traditional sense of going on a grid, okay? But we're gonna go back to split and I'm gonna stick it onto eight, okay? Okay, so now I can replay, I can play that break as it was. But I might wanna rearrange it. Okay, and it's up to you now, and obviously now it's just about you jamming on the pads, coming up with something that you like, and then looking to record it. On this side here, we've got an edit function, okay? The edit function will actually allow us to edit each individual slice within this section, okay? And what we can look to do, is we can look to reset everything. So reset will mean that any editing that I've done to it, it will get rid of it, and it will reset it back to that normal phase, okay? Let's have a look at this apply to button. Apply to just basically means it's going to apply it to a pad. The way that the machine works is you've got two ways of doing it. You can even just hit apply, which means it will take those eight slices and apply them to group A. So let's do that. So now when I look in A, machine automatically puts in a pattern for you, okay, which is the pattern as it runs. But let's imagine we don't want that. Well, we know we can get rid of it by hitting shift and clear. Now, I can go through. Yep, and I can go through and I can play. If I was recording, that would record everything that I've done there. At the moment, you're probably hearing that some of the pads might be coming through slightly quieter or slightly louder than the other. Remember, if you go into pad mode, you can go into fixed velocity as well. So it means no matter how hard or how softly I hit the pad, it will still come through at fixed velocity, okay? So that's really useful if you want your drum pattern to remain all the same. Okay, and again, it doesn't just have to be a drum break that you've used, it can be absolutely anything that you sample into it. So it may be actually that you record yourself playing a two bar phrase on a guitar, and you might want to actually glitch it up a little bit by then slicing that guitar two bar phrase and then replaying bits. And it's really good to experiment with the machine, and that's the beauty of it. The workflow is very accessible, and it allows you to basically jam on the fly and come up with new ideas and new concepts that necessarily you might not have come up with on another piece of equipment.